Alicia Herman. I'm a writer, theatre maker and all-round creative experiment person based in the Riverland region of South Australia. The Riverland is a beautiful bunch of little towns spread along about 150 kilometres of the River Murray and it's the place that I've chosen to make my home. I was asked to write a piece for the Come to Where I Am Australia project and the piece that I've written is a, a fictional character and they are named Rax and they are, they are addicted to fantasy novels and to caramello koalas uh, but they love the Riverland as much as I do and I hope that you'll hear that when you listen to the piece. Um, it's been a real pleasure to be asked to write a piece for Come to Where I Am Australia, just to spend some time thinking about the place that I call home, which is a complicated but really, really special place. Stars here are different. Like the air. It's different. Feels different. Tastes different. Is different. It's like... It's like breathing in, and I do. I breathe it in. Standing in my parents' driveway out past Baringa, the Murray River spread out below and a river of stars up there. Crusher dust all stirred up by the ute and I'm full with it. The air, the dust, the stars, the longing. My mum read The Hobbit to me when I was five. A chapter at a time, curled up on that old floral lounge. She's still got it, sitting out in the back room, collecting other shit she can't get rid of, teapots, old manila folders, a bowl for the dog that died five years ago, and an absolute army of canvas shopping bags that never get used because no one ever remembers to chuck them in the car when they go to the shops. So they have to buy a new one every single time. Maybe not every single time but you know what I mean anyway after the hobbit she read me the entire Narnia series and I reckon after that I was reading myself and I just never stopped I read every Dragonlance book our little library in Renmark had then the Pern books and Catherine Kerr and all the others if it had a dragon on the cover I was going to devour it mum ended up having to sign a note saying that I could borrow from the adult section because I'd read all the books I was interested in in the kids' section. I read the first Game of Thrones book when I was like 14, 15. So like, I don't know, what's that, 15 years ago? So I thought it was cool before everyone else had even heard of it. Not that I've ever been cool or that I need to be or want to be. And anyway, that shit doesn't matter as much once you get out of high school. You can go find your people then, the people you surely like not just the ones born in the same year as you and I mean everyone leaves after high school anyway that's what they say that's the story everybody leaves all the young people we stayed though Owen and Lauren and me we stayed and we're still here now and that's nothing to be ashamed of who'd want to go to Adelaide Concrete and traffic lights and people just all up in your space? Who'd want to go there when you could be here? Everything I want, everything I need is right here. Though, to be fair, a bigger library as a kid would have been great. It must be really great to be a kid now with the internet. Like growing up with it, ebooks and fan fiction and chat rooms, right? Plenty of places to find your people, places to hunt down any kind of story you want. There are stories here too. In this place, in this river, in this land, in this big open sky. It's right there in front of me. I open my wings. They're big and strong and purple, like a twirl wrapper with flecks of yellow, gold. I spread my wings and I launch myself up into that big open sky. My mouth full of gum leaves and ears full of river, scales and muscles and dreams riding the wind, I'm up high, real high. This place, our riverland, all the little townships and blocks and the river itself, it all just becomes lines and shadows. And that promise, you know, 
of maps on the inside cover of any fantasy novel worth reading. Each dot on this map tells my stories. But this place, it isn't mine, because it isn't anyone's. It belongs to itself, and I belong to it. Wings and teeth and memory, and I'm blocking out the stars if someone just thought to look up. But no one does. I fold my wings and my claws, talons, I'm going to go with claws. My claws, they stretch out in front of me honing in on my target. I'm fast and I'm deadly and I'm reaching down and I'm grasping a fox that shouldn't be here or a cat, I'm trying to clear him out, make it safer, you know, for all our endangered little microbats and turtles. I chase all the foxes and the cats and all the other invaders away for the night and then satisfied and full, I glide down low, following the glow of street lights and houseboats that haven't gone to bed. I tuck my wings in close and I circle back to skim beneath the berry bridge, my nostrils full of river smell and mud. And then I settle on the slanted roof of the Berry Visitor Centre. You know the one. Its odd angles are a perfect perch. In fact, maybe it's my weight, me sitting on it all the time, sinking down through the steel and glass and concrete. Maybe that's what's made the whole place look lopsided. Down in there, the Berry Visitor Centre, I mean. They've got a little pet Murray River turtle. I take my niece there to feed her sometimes. The turtle, not my niece, obviously, though they do have a cafe next door. Anyway, the ladies in the Visitor Centre, they'll sprinkle a little food on the top of her tank and we'll watch her little mouth gobble it up. There's a sign on the tank. It says her name is Bonnie because she was born in Lake Bonnie, like me. Like I wasn't born in or on the lake exactly, obviously, but my parents, they used to have a little house down on the highway there in Barmra, and I was born in the Barmra Hospital. I don't think anyone's allowed to have babies there anymore. I reckon they all get sent to Barry now. I guess must be happening everywhere, small towns, services drying up or centralising. My dad was born in the Barmra Hospital though, and all his brothers. Their dad too. If I have kids, no continuing that tradition, I guess. Not, not that I think I will have kids. I mean, I might. I, I, I don't know. I don't hate them or whatever. I just, I just, I like doing my own thing. You know, going to work, coming home, going down the river, curling up in the hammock with a book, just living. I can spread my wings whenever it suits me without, without anyone else to let down. I think, I think he would have come round eventually, my old man. He never got the chance to, and it's, it's okay, it is, but I think, I think he would have come round eventually. Folk like me leave because it's easier. It's easier to be who you are in a bigger place where you can hide, when no one notices that you're a bit different. But I mean, in a little place, everything makes you a bit different. Brain hair, play Dungeons and Dragons, can't play sport, nose always in a book and yeah. Got plenty of ways not to fit in here. My old man, he was the kind of bloke who wanted to fit in, or at least he was the kind of bloke who didn't want to stand out. Anyway, he's gone. Mum's always been all right about stuff. You know, he's just, she's a bit rough around the edges, but always supportive, always up for a laugh and always welcoming to whoever I bring home. Not that I've lived home for years now. I've got a little place on that, you know, that invisible cusp between Winky and Glossop. But, you know, the two little towns that got left behind by a highway detour and a little bit of neglect. Anyway, 
My place is one of those old block houses, so it's half falling down. It's cheap rent. It's got this nice patch of bare dirt around the house, plenty of room to land and sink my claws and belly down into that soil. There's rows of vines, though, stretching out on every side, so I'll probably die of cancer too. It's the sprays and shit, you know. Settles on the roof, then down into your rainwater tank. We're all gulping it down here, present and past, myth and science or whatever's left after that. The way this year is going, maybe none of us will live long enough to get cancer. Maybe we'll all end up with the COVID. Kind of. Kind of doesn't really feel real here. We're so far away from everything. But still, we are pretty close to the Victorian border. One of my mum's mates works out at Yamba. That's a checkpoint for anyone crossing the border. And usually it's just about stopping people bringing fruit in, um, you know, to stop fruit flying, whatever. But now it's stopping people trying to sneak into South Australia and it all, it all just seems a bit more sinister now. Nothing much has really changed for me, though, for us. Just lots of crosses made of duct tape telling you where to stand. I say that. I say nothing much has changed. Really, it has. Everything has. You can see it in people's faces. Everyone looks completely wrecked, tired, you know, real, real tired. I never, never wanted to leave like everyone else. And I still don't. But it feels weird thinking that I can't leave, you know, like before, if I wanted to, I could have saved and bought myself a ticket to anywhere. Now the rest of the world just feels really, really far away. Even Adelaide. We'd usually be down like every month or every couple of months. We haven't been down since February. And usually, you know, we'd visit friends or hit that little comic book store or front of mall or just kick around. Now we're just home. I guess our annual pilgrimage to Avcon is off the cards too. So that means no cosplay. No, you know, they're Artist Alley, all those tables of art, and just none of that, that buzz. Maybe next year. This year I just go to work, come home, get online, or read. There's always new places to go that way, between the covers of a book. And so here I am giving it a go myself, trying to tell a story, my own story. Because when I breathe it in, this place, these stars, these gum trees and memories and all the bits that make this place home, that's a longing in my mouth in my ears, in my skin, in myself, to tell our story.